The Sports Source is brought to you by Fast Frame. Turn your memorabilia into a work of art. You are watching East Tennessee's first and only year-round sports talk show on television. This is The Sports Source with your host, John Pennington. Welcome into the Sports Source, presented by Bill Hotz and Associates. Boy, today, consider it reality TV. We're going to cut through the snark and the agendas and a lot of the misinformation that's been out there with facts, fairness, and hopefully a little bit of humor as we do this whole thing. We're breaking down. 99% of the show today is on John Curry being hired as Tennessee's athletic director. Let's dive right into it. First segment of our program brought to you by... Bill Hotz and Associates. We're going to have quick mentions all day for all of our great family of sponsors, but we want to thank Bill Hotz and Associates right off the top. You talk about bringing you the in-depth coverage, that is what they do. And we should have a graph. There we go. Yes, there are several points, there are several points during the day where I'm going to uh, just give you a full few seconds to talk on what I call bull, things that I heard this week that I disagree with or I think silly. First of all, lots of people talking about this being a six-month search and you wound up with this. Well, look, it seems clear to me that we had a five-and-a-half-month segment of boosters playing Monopoly and leaking their favorites, followed by an actual two-week search once Davenport arrived because you sure didn't hear Curry's name really until Davenport got here. So I'm not buying the, this was an actual six month search. All right, want to welcome in the panel here. Hope you enjoyed the bull sound effects. We'll be having those throughout the show. Um, not during your guys' portion, but uh, Bob Hodge, Jimmy Himes, who congratulations, you've been quoted by all your competition all week long, as usual when the big story breaks. Uh, Mike Strange, Chuck Cavalleras. Thanks guys. Um, last Sunday, Bubba Cunningham was the hot name. He pulled out of the AD race apparently Sunday afternoon. After the show. Right? After the show, you <laughs> yeah. watched the show, so that's it. Uh, then out of the blue, John Curry landed the gig. Now, I heard that name mm -hmm. Tuesday morning, and you can go back and watch my Twitter. I tweeted, you know, something to the effect of, that's it. Alert me when this is over. There aren't two people over there who have the same name. Well, uh, John Curry turns out to be the right name, finally. Uh, do, you, do you feel, coming out of left field like that so quickly, does it feel like Tennessee did a due diligence on John Curry? I'm going to say probably because I already knew who he was. The, look, if, if you had done that quickly with Bubba Cunningham, I would say absolutely not. I don't know how in the world you could be on that committee and not know about John Curry's time at Tennessee. So I, I'm going to say they, they should have already known it. There, there was not as much due diligence to do with him as other candidates. So from that perspective, they should know what they're getting. Although some, at least one, didn't realize he was involved in with the former, former firing. That is correct. You guys, do you think okay. they did? Does it seem like they did the due diligence on John Curry? I'm going to agree with Jimmy. I think the due diligence was basically done. I mean, because there's everything you were wanting. Yeah. yeah, everything you're wanting. And I, I don't think there was a heck of a lot of secrets. Like you said, there was the, okay, there is a little bit of bad blood. But, yeah, I think of all the candidates that were mentioned, his due diligence was probably the easiest. Okay. Yeah. I, I agree, and I, I agree with what Jimmy said, and what your bull there about uh, <laughs> you know this being a six-month thing. But even though it wasn't a six-month search, I, I think the, these people on the search committee had time to think about John Curry, even if they weren't formally meeting about him. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll go right now with yes, it was. Okay, check quickly. I'm going to say no, and I'll say no because I think Tennessee people may have had a good idea who John Curry was, but how much did Beverly Davenport know? how much John Curry. So, I mean, that was where I would kind of draw the line and say, no, probably don't know. One interesting note, at his press conference, uh, John Curry thanked Gene DiFilippo specifically of Turnkey, the search firm, yeah. for calling him. And apparently, you know, they did due diligence as well, whatever that would be that needed to be done. But I thought it was interesting because DiFilippo was one of those guys, he's a big friend of, of Philip Fulmer, and most of us looked at it when he and Manning were on this, on this panel, we said, well, it's in the bag for Philip Fulmer. The fact that Curry thanked DeFilippo, interesting. So let's talk about Philip Fulmer. The biggest backlash of the week has come from the Fulmer camp. A lot of his former players are really ticked off. We'll get more into that later. Uh, Davenport said she wanted a Power Five athletic director, period. Mm -hmm. Fulmer wasn't a Power Five athletic director, but she gave him an interview anyway, which we'll also get into later. Uh, Jimmy, you reported that Fulmer felt misled that he had the job based on a call he received from a committee member on Monday? Is that Monday correct? morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you're the only guy to report that. Now, I, uh, 
I back you, that's why you're on this show. Uh, <laughs> but you're the only one saying it, and that's caused a lot of backlash. But clarify for us what it is you believe. There was a, a call made to Philip Fulmer on Monday morning, and while I think Philip Fulmer felt like he was going, he was in pretty good position to get the job, I think what he was told during that conversation gave him even more confidence to feel he would get the job. I'm not saying the committee member said it's yours, but I think the conversation led Philip Fulmer to believe he was in really good shape and that he would be hired as Tennessee's athletic director. Obviously, that changed later in the day, but that phone call was made. Now, you could misinterpret a call. Was hey, it? this is what we think. Hey, we think you interviewed great. We think you presented well. We think Beverly Davenport's now. I don't know what I was said, but I think he came out of that feeling more comfortable. And I wonder, is it possible that a committee member, Charlie Anderson, who was more of the former camp than the others, someone pushed up his interview, said this thing's moving fast, That's let's correct. get in here and do this interview on Sunday. Is it possible that booster, who wasn't in the loop on the Curry thing, called Fulmer and said, boy, that went well yesterday, he's feeling good, and then they're both blindsided? That's possible. I will tell you that, uh, that Fulmer's interview was scheduled for Friday, and Beverly Davenport actually was one that called him and said, we need to, uh, we're going to move this up to Sunday. So she was the one that made the call to, to Coach Fulmer. Interesting. We'll talk about more of that. I also want to ask very quickly, a lot of fans don't want to hear it. A lot of them are saying that Peyton Manning's mad. He wasn't behind this. He was used. Well, Peyton Manning was in on the Curry interview. He uh, made calls to boosters supporting the hire. He called Blackburn and Fulmer and broke the news, and he was also at the press conference. If he didn't like it, he sure acted like he liked it. Your thoughts on, on Peyton Manning's involvement in this? Well, I mean, think about it. Of all the quarterbacks, he's been the best actor for a long time, so maybe he <laughs> is. But no, I, I don't think you go that deep into it, and you're being pushed that direction. I mean, especially for somebody who wields as big a stick as Peyton Manning does. I don't think you're pushed down a road like that if you're Peyton Manning. Uh, that's probably a good point. How much can UT really corral Peyton Manning yeah. if, if he doesn't want to be corralled? He is the sheriff. It's almost like Tennessee said, we want to know what you think, but here's what we're going to do, and we want you to be on board Is that with what you him. think happened? So I, you're not I, buying that Peyton was in on this? No, I think he was in. I, I think they wanted his input. But I think at the end of the day, they said, thank you, but this is the direction we're going to go, and we want, you, we want your support. Okay. We need your support. I, I, I think that's pretty mm. much the way it went down. Jimmy? I don't necessarily think that's the way it went down. I, I think that Peyton Manning voted for John Curry. Now, why is what I'm not 100% sure of? Did he just look at the resume of John Curry versus Philip Fulmer and say, hey, this is clear cut. We're going this direction. Uh, did he take the, uh, I guess, uh, edict from Beverly Davenport that it's going to be a power five yeah, that conference changes, athlete yeah. director? And he's like, well, Philip Fulmer has no chance. So that's why I'm voting for John Curry. I don't know why, but I do believe he voted for Curry. 15 seconds, Mike. Right yeah, I, I, I agree with Jimmy on that. I, I think he, Beverly Davenport made it clear it was going to be a power five athletic director. It would be pointless to vote for Phil, Philip Fulmer at that point. It was almost, if that's the case, then it was pointless to interview Philip Fulmer, which we will get into a little bit later. Uh, we're gonna, when we come back, we'll talk about John Curry's strengths and weaknesses, the book on John Curry. As we go to break, though, take a look at the resumes you can compare for yourself. See you on the other side. <laughs> 